It's a hobby for us, my bro. If we don't it's have it. it, we get sick. That's it's why we go rob and steal thing, and break bro. in everywhere we come for do this thing, for doing this drug. You know, nigga. See, you see our stuff. You can see our stuff. Don't have place to put our stuff. Talk about Kaitan. Kaitan, that's a night place. You see, we must live in the street. We must sleep in the cold. The police beat us. You see, it says that here we we sometimes out. people come here, we sleep, they open the tap, we must sleep in the water. That's why we get cold when we stand up. Even in the four o'clock in the morning, we must stand up here to go broke in by the people's cars, to steal from the people. When people stand by the shop to buy them a nice cup of coffee, we must pickpocket them while to get to, to survive in the street. The phone. That's why we don't sometimes care about I grab that saying, I, I run, I come here, I go see how that saying, I Enjoy the money here with my friends and That's stuff. That's why you don't care everything. about Mother City. Kaita is not a good place for us. That's why we used to us. do our yeah. track in like this life. We do it. My name is Ryan Dalton, and people also call me Brown. It's, it's very ironic that Cape Town is the Mother City um, in a sense that Actually, the type of mother that Cape Town is is often the type of mother that the kids have experienced back at home. Any kid that you ask on the streets, pretty much any kid, they will always talk good about their mother. No matter how bad the mother's treated them, no matter what terrible things their mother's put them through, their mother's still in their heart. And the four words that will always strike like the biggest fights and the biggest stab wounds is your masa but a lot of the kids' situations with their own mothers is this weird sort of relationship where they haven't always been treated that good, but yet they still have this like loyalty to their mothers. Um, and it's the same thing I see on the streets with the mother city. The kids come into this life and the mother city invites them with open arms and is offering a home for the kids, but not treating them right and abusing them. As a mother city, I don't think it really looks after its people. It looks after the ones with money, for sure, because the facilities in that are there. You know, the infrastructure is there, but then you pay for it. What about those of us that can't pay for it? Where do we stay? So who's going to look after me? Nobody looks after me. The city doesn't look after me. The city just chases us around anyway, because you're not allowed to sleep here, you're not allowed to sleep there, you're not allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do that. What can I do? I mean, I've been chased off a bench for just sitting there reading my book. Why? Because you're not allowed to sit here. Uh, why? Because it's for tourists only. Excuse me? The mother city for me is to find a place for the people who are sitting on the street. Then you can say it's a mother city. It's not a mother city now. 
really you must make a plan it's not only him lot of them and some of them they seek you see how they look like please men help them my name is Reynolds I've been staying here for the past 17 years I was born 1981 the 1st of January you see okay I've been living here for now for a year a lot of years and what did I get out of it? I'm still on the street, you know. So, if this was really a mother city, I wouldn't be here. I'll probably have a good job, you know. And a nice place to stay. You know, actually to me, people just think of themselves. You see, they don't think about another person. If this was really a mother city, because listen to the word mother city. Oh my bro. Mother city. The word, the word is, is a beautiful word, but I don't think this mother city is really a mother city because they don't care anything about us. We stay so long on the street because we struggling here for money, for work, we asking by the people, by the cars, so we standing there by the fence asking for work. Then they want to tell you a lot of things. You got crimes. You committing crimes in a lot of things. We are I'm more than 20 years, more than 20 years here on the street. There are some of us that are more than 30, 40 years on the street. Some of us die on the street. Some of us still, some of us try to make some money and things like that. Some of us, we don't have problems. Some of us have problems at home. But still, we come to love you on the street because some of us chosen by your own life. Some chose to be free, some chose not to have stress or whatever. People, we are history, yeah, we are man. History, we are history, man. Yeah, man. They are all over the world. Yeah. You won't get us nowhere. Don't, don't care don't about the mother city, man. I don't even check the mother city because I don't see the way life used to be. People don't care about us. So why must I respect mother city as the mother city? Understand? That's why me, everything I do is hopeless. Understand, sir? Because the mother said to give me nothing. We look dirty. We, we're not uh, part of the humankind, I believe. Uh, they, I, I feel there is the difference between the rich and the poor. And a lot of people who are living on, on the streets are local people born in the Western Cape. You get people from overseas, they've got properties. We don't have even a small piece of property in this country. So I feel so depressed about the whole thing and uh, we need homes. 90% of the homeless, and I've put that in inverted commas, people that I know actually do have homes. They've, a lot of them can go home to their families. Um, a lot of them actually own their own homes. So if you do a statistical research on the homeless people, you'll probably find it will probably be reduced down to about 10%. There's no motivation in Cape Town itself for the, the people to go and work. You know, why should I work? I can sleep in the streets. I can go to a shelter if the weather's lousy. There's free food around all over. The people will just dole out, and the people dole out big money. Big money. I've seen them hand over 200 rand notes. And these guys, some of these guys pick up between six and 700 rand a day. If I could earn 700 rand a day, I wouldn't be here. I'd be living in whatever hotel there is, you know? We're actually having terrible time, and most of these people who are on the streets are sick people. So they're not getting attention from many people. A lot of people pass us. They, they think nothing of us. Even if you try to park a car, they chase you, they call the, 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 the police. You see all these people, they're living on the street, they've been living on the streets. 
But people like you and me, we pass. We think nothing of these people. So what, what do people expect us to do? Is to commit crimes. And what happens when you commit crimes, then we're locked up. It's not that people want to commit crime, because they're forced to commit crimes by the society, by the mother city. The, the, the one you call the so-called mother city. This is not mother city. This is not a mother city. This is a devil city. Um, well, first of all, uh, I personally believe any adult that chooses street life and wants that for their life, an adult, uh, should be allowed to live that way as long as they also agree to go by, you know, rules of society, that they don't just go to the toilet anywhere, that they don't whatever. Um, but that would also mean that the city would have to work with them. If, if you lock the public toilets at night and things, then I don't know why you get angry when a person just goes on your doorstep. And the clothes that I'm, I'm basically got on is, that's it. As I said, I've got three pairs of pants and these are the tops and that's it. And it's so cold, when do I get to wash my clothing? You know, so I've kind of got to wash it and then hope that it's not going to rain or get too cold because so, I've got nowhere to hang it either. So I hang it in one of the, the hawks so that it's safe while it's wet but it takes three to four days to dry. Yeah. Uh, it, really, it really pisses me off the way people treat people on the streets in general, adults and children, but especially children. I know that there's like rich people who have dogs that they treat better than people on the streets. You know, the dogs wear these little clothes and they eat this nice meat and whatever, and yet they treat people on the streets like animals. Uh, I hate to say it, but people are just totally callous to the situation. And many people feel different uh, feelings about it. Uh, so they may pull up to the robot and they may feel angry that a kid lives on the street or sad or angry at the kid because they think he's this horrible little child, you know, that wants to rob them. Or they may feel guilty but not know what to do. But a lot of times they don't allow those um, feelings or emotions translate into positive action that will lead to change. I think something needs to happen in society where people's mindsets shift. born and, and raised in Cape Town and I joined the Navy in 1976 and I've got 20 years experience there. I reached the top, management, senior, senior level. Got a lot of supervisory, a lot of admin management experience. I left there and I moved to Joburg almost well, 10 years ago now. Okay? And I came back three years ago and eight months after I got back here, the company closed. So I was been without a job. So I'm celebrating my second anniversary this year this month of being unemployed. <laughs> I've been looking for work for two years and I've been applying for jobs all over the countryside for two years and even though I apply I get no response. It's the employment laws in the country at the moment and it's been inferred to me by employment agencies and that, that I'm the wrong colour, wrong gender and the wrong side of 50. But God knows what he's doing. He's going to give me a job. Somewhere, somehow, he knows what he's doing, and that's all I can do is just trust in him and have faith. I don't earn wages. I don't earn money. Um, I work at the flower market here, and all she does is she gives us 10 rand a day just for cigarettes or, or whatever, you know. But I get fed. I get fed every day. God just somehow provides in his own wonderful supernatural way. There have been a couple of times where I've actually needed um, for example, toiletries, and I don't have the money, and I've been praying, 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 and I just don't have toothpaste, and I haven't had toothpaste for 10 days. How do I clean my teeth, you know? So, and I try and pluck up the courage too big, and I can't do it. I, I just can't do it. I get people walking past that will give me a sandwich just out of nowhere. I mean, I had somebody walk past yesterday and said, I got my pay today, and I'm going to give you some money, and then gave me 100 rand. Um, thank you, Lord. You know, thank you. <laughs> you know? That's how we survive, that's how I survive. And as I said, God provides and He does.
when I came here for the first time, I was only 18 years old, uh, come from a small town in America. I'd never seen a child living on the streets before. So the first time I saw a kid digging through a rubbish bin looking for food, I was like, what is going on? And I walked up to him and I was like, excuse me, did you lose something in there? Like, what are you looking for? He's like, I'm looking for food. And I was like, oh gosh, can I buy you something to eat? And he was like, yeah, sure. So we sat and got some pies and ate together and chatted. Everything I heard was just totally foreign to me uh, about children literally living on the streets and surviving there. And it was like shocking to me. And so I sort of became very curious and interested in this lifestyle and this subculture that I'd never seen before. And so every chance I got during that first three months I was here, I would go to the streets and hang out with the guys. And I can say that in that sense, they really, I was inspired by them to see change come in a situation that I feel is unjust.